Now, if we uh, want to consider how much wind loading there is on that boom when it's turned around the other way, it's 30 pounds per square foot times 5.0 square feet. And of course, we don't use a rounding factor on that because we say that's square stock, and so we have to use the, the flat surface uh, calculation. Gives us 150 pounds if the beam is turned around that way. And naturally, we'll do our design from the 231.2. Now, when you uh, look, this, this fellow that we're talking about has uh, the idea that you're going to put up some roll 25G. Oh, okay. Fine, I want that helps. Thank you, Pat. He has some roll, or he's going to get some roll 25G, and he wants to put it up 30 feet with his um, beam on top. And he would like to make this thing self supporting, so he wants to. Uh, uh, put it into a concrete foundation out in his backyard. <coughs> All right. When you look in the Rome catalog, you find that the that the 25G tower has a projected area of that is a one face of it, two, uh, 0.254 square feet per foot of length of a uh, long 25G tower, 0.254 square feet per foot of length of the tower. <clears throat> now, it's built out of round elements, so we apply the two-thirds rounding factor. And because it is a triangular tower, having more than just one face, it's actually three faces, on a triangular cross-section tower, you apply a shape factor of 1.5 to that, which takes care of the wind loading on the other two sides, which are not facing the wind. <clears throat> so we find that the total wind loading on that Rome 25G tower will be 7.62 pounds per foot length of the tower. If a tower is a square cross-section, as uh, some towers are, the shape factor becomes 1.75. Just for reference, you might like to <coughs> drop that down to your notes. 1.5 for triangular cross-section, 1.75 for square cross-section towers. In addition, to the wind loading on the tower itself. We have to realize the fellow will have some coaxial lines running up this tower. He'll have a rotor cable to operate the rotator and the rotator itself up on the top of the tower. For RG214U, which is 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, Divide that by 12 to convert that into feet times 30 pounds per square foot times the two thirds rounding factor because it's coax round. He gets wind loading on his coax of 0.732 pounds per foot. The rotator cable is 3 quarter inch diameter. Divide that by 12 times 30 pounds per square foot, again times the two-thirds round factor, and you get 1.25 pounds per foot of wind loading on the rotator cable. The rotator itself, I've assumed it has about a half a square foot <coughs> of area, which would be typical for a rotator of the size he would be using right there. So with the same factors there, 10 pounds of wind loading on that Rotate. <coughs> now let us calculate the resultant forces 
that we have on our uh, have our from all of these loads that we have on here. <coughs> we take the wind pressure on our beam up there times this height above ground, that is times the moment arm being 30 feet of power. So we multiply those, 231.2, which is the wind force we calculated for the beam, times 30 feet gives us 6,936 foot-pounds of moment that will be at the base. You realize that uh, farther up the tower, the moment is not so great, just right up at the top. There's no moment. The moment is proportional to how far down the tower you can calculate for. But the greatest moment, of course, will be where you have the longest moment arm, which will be at the base of the tower. Well, anybody knows that the thing going to break off there, it's going to break off. The rotor, 10 pounds times 30 feet, gives us 300 foot pounds of moment. The tower itself, 7.62 times 30, but now not times 30 pounds per square foot, but not times the whole height of the tower, but rather half the height of the tower, because this is a distributed load. The wind force is uniform along the entire tower, and although it might not be totally evident, it will work out that if you calculate the total wind force on the tower and multiply it by half the height, you will get the moment that's uh, produced down there. If you don't believe that, try subbing those moments for the first foot and the second foot and the third foot down, and you will find that you come out, uh, as I've said, with uh, the calculation for half of the height being the correct amount. So I've uh, taken the 7.62 pounds per foot <coughs> times, I mean, 7.62 times <coughs> the full length uh, to be the total uh, wind force on the tower times 15 feet to give 329 foot pounds. The coax is 0.732 square feet per, per foot, times 30, times 15 again, because again it's a distributed load. <coughs> yeah, I got off my track here. The, the tower is giving us 3,429 foot pounds, the coax 329 foot pounds, and the cable for the rotor 562 foot pounds. <coughs> this gives us a total moment at the base of this tower under these conditions with the maximum wind that we calculate for, of 11,556 foot-pounds moment at the base of the tower. Now, when you look up in the Rowan catalog, they will show you in there, in their specifications on that tower, that the maximum safe moment of restraint on that tower, that is its ability to withstand moment, is 5,130 foot-pounds. You see, we're, in this case, more than twice overload on that tower in that case. So when our, our friend calculated this thing out, he said, hey, I can't put Rome 25G up self-supporting with that beam on top of it at a 30-foot height. It'll break down in the high wind. So he decides to do something else. He talks to some of his ham friends, and they, uh, they say, well, look, we'll put it up alongside the house and, uh, and put a, a bracket, a house bracket support on that thing. So he decides he will try that. All right, so our friend designs up this way. He says, look, I'll put it alongside the house. I'll put a house bracket right here against the eave of the house. Let 20 feet of the tower stick up, and the house <coughs> eave is 10 feet above the ground. 
Now, let's calculate the moment that you'll have at the point of support, which is now where the power will break if it uh, were to break. The beam, now calculating for a 20 foot a moment arm there, the beam gives us 4,624 foot pounds, the rotor 10 times 20 or 200 foot pounds, the distributed load of the of the coaxial line, the tower, and the rotor cable. I've lumped those all together and it comes out 9.6 pounds per foot. Um, no sense in going through all those independently because we've already done those. 9.6 times the 20 foot times 10 feet because of being a distributed load. That is, it would be as though the or a concentrated load at the center gives us 1920 foot pounds. The total moment at the bracket is 6,744 foot pounds. Well, that's still larger than the allowable moment of restraint on the 25G tower, which was 5,130. But uh, he figured, well, what the heck, that's close enough, I'm going to risk it. So he uh, uh, decides to go ahead with his calculation. <clears throat> he said, let's see what's the force on the house bracket. Now, in this case, we are supporting the tower not by a moment at the base, which was uh, the way it would be if it were just very constantly out of the yard, but now we are distributing that moment across a 10-foot moment arm. It's as though we taking the tower, and we held it this way. We'll uh, keep it from turning over in the wind. <clears throat> so we can take our 11,556 foot pounds that we calculated for the self-supporting situation, and say, look, that moment is now resolved on a 10-foot moment arm. So therefore, the, uh, the force on the Eve bracket would be 1155.6 pounds. <clears throat> well, he was so excited about uh, what he had determined on this thing that he went and talked to his wife about this and told her how he had calculated this. He used the only smarts that he had learned down at AM and and he uh, said, look, I'm going to, I'm going to put this thing here and calculates that will have 155.6 pounds of force on the roof. His wife said, you're going to put 1155 pounds of what on our roof? And so he starts to explain that this is the lateral thrust due to the wind velocity, et cetera, et cetera. She said, look, kid, this is our bedroom window, and I'm not having even 1155 pounds of anything on the roof over my head. If you are going to do something like that, I'm going to move into the kids' room, and you can just sleep in bed with your Ikewood 872A and see how you like that. Well, he, under such pressures as that, he decided he would revise his way of thinking. So uh, he abandoned this idea of, uh, of using a house bracket. Furthermore, it showed that it was an overstress on the moment of restraint of the tower itself. And so he decided to take another approach to it. He decided that he would like to move the tower out into the yard again but he's going to put guys on it. He'll put uh, a set of three guys <coughs> at the 40-foot level. He says, well, I'm going to guy out going up 50 feet with this thing. I'll get an extra uh, 20 feet of height, which is more favorable from an electrical standpoint. And I will get it away from the house and not have the wife worried about it tearing up the roof. I could not tell you myself whether the roof would stand that. I'm not an expert on wood construction, and I wouldn't know whether uh, a bracket to the edge of the eaves or however would stand that much force. Maybe it will. I don't know. I have to talk to a, 
somebody expert on wood construction. Let's calculate now the situation guide at the 40 foot level. He puts an anchor post out here in the concrete. The anchor post sticking five feet above the ground. And he has three guides on it. All right, let's see what moment, what bending moment we'll have at the guy level up here. Again, the 241.2 of the force on the on the beam uh, plus the rotor. I'm just adding that 10 pounds of the rotor uh, <coughs> on that. Times the 10 foot arm, you see, it's just 10 feet down to the guy point. Plus 9.6, that is our uh, pound per foot on the tower, rotor cable, and coax, times five feet, that is, it's a distributed load, and so it's just from halfway up down to land. It gives us 2,892 foot pounds. Well, that is well below the uh, 5,130 that the 25G tower will withstand. So it's plenty safe on that. <clears throat> now, because it is a 50 foot high uh, structure, the moment that would be at the base, if it were not guide, if it were just self supporting in the concrete there, would be 241.2 times 50 plus 9.6 times 50 times 25 for the half way up for the distributed load would give us 24,062 foot pounds at the base. That is being resolved by the guides up here. So again, we take that uh, the unsupported moment that we would have at the base and divide it by the 40 feet will give us 601.5 pounds of horizontal restraint at the guy level. Now, let's see what we do with that. Thank you. 